I'm installing a brand new Essential Expo rack from uh, Gamaviti. Tim was kind enough to outfit me with a shirt, uh, so I'll be ripping the brand today. Um, but we're doing an install on a 100 series. This is a 99 Lexus LX. Uh, so we'll get right into it. I have these ARB brackets uh, for, a, for an ARB roof rack, um, but I was using those with a, a custom rack that I had built using speed rail, um, grid couplers, and a couple of U-joints, but that was no longer cutting it for, for my needs. Um, so first step in the process is gonna be to remove those, um, and then I'll take out these roof channel roof channel guards um, and I'll have to clean up up underneath there uh, and then I'll and I'll get the new one on for all those guys with the stock factory roof rack on there still you'll need I believe these are a t25 star bit they could be a 40 I don't recall um, but I took mine off a good good while ago um, but that's the uh, factory hardware there and the rest are just 12 millimeter bolts that um, go in all the other sections. Took these off of my buddies. For this section, I recommend wearing gloves. We're uh, removing these channel guards, um, which are, I think, just really thin aluminum, but they're kind of sharp. So, there are plastic clips holding them in place. There you go. Mm. Nice. That'll be satisfying to clean out. All right, by now I'm using a pressure washer to clean out these channels. Um, and so far it's looking pretty good. You can see that side still looks uh, as it did because I haven't hit that angle yet but you can see what a difference it's making just with a pressure washer and i went ahead and reinstalled the bolts um, for the roof rack that used to be here to protect those bolt holes from from water um, but i'm just gonna clean up the roof and then we'll get the get the rack going this is the box well more like a crate that uh, tim ships these racks in it's, um, let's see, 92 and a half inches long by 60 inches, which is five feet wide. Um, it looks to me like RNL actually put a fork through the crate here. So when I take this out, I'm gonna be expecting, making sure there's no damage, um, but I just had it in the back of my dad's F-150 um, and put it on some sawhorses so that I could work on it a little bit higher up. Um, so next step is to take it out of the box, uh, see what's see what's good, then I'll put the towers on and then the rack can go on. it is this is an expert packing job uh, if I do say so myself the thumb protects the powder coat which all of this is done in-house by local businesses that Tim has relationships with which is just incredible you can't you can't I mean you can't buy that <laughs> I'm probably in the clear. It doesn't look like anything was hit by those forks, so that's good news. Um, but uh, yeah, one other thing I'll mention. 
couple of these uh, accessory panels um, are for Cruisers on the Rocks. So Lee will be giving those away at the event and Tim shipped them uh, to save a little bit of money. Makes sense to me, but here we go. I'll get this other sheet off. Figured I'd take a second to appreciate this packaging again because this is just unreal. Um, there are two top plates that span the entire width and length of the, of the crate um, with crossbars that brace it. Um, yeah, this is this is just nuts. It's you know, I mean, it's pretty run of the mill plywood, but it's it's gonna protect it a lot better than something like cardboard. Now, I didn't order this. This is the multi-plate for the COTR raffle. Um, and uh, I don't actually have much use for this yet. Um, so I'm probably not gonna buy one. But if you're curious, this is what it looks like. I'll leave it in the packaging, of course, since it's going to the raffle. But that's, uh, that's your packaged up multi-plate. You can sort of see the all the different holes. This is a new product that Tim just released, so I'm pretty excited to see who who wins that one. Mine came with two boxes, um, but that's because one of them is uh, the spare tire accessory mount for the multi plate, and that'll go to the raffle. Um, so if you if you bought the Essential Expo, you'll have the rack the fair lead um, and one singular box with the game of ED logo on it um, and that's got all your mounting hardware and everything and probably gonna have a nice little note from Tim. Thanks Tim. Alright, so I've divided all the hardware into two categories. This is all the essential stuff, everything that'll come in, in a kit that you buy from Tim if all you're buying is the rack. And all of this are the extras, the things that I decided to purchase that'll make, make my process a little bit easier. Um, so I bought four sets of rack receivers, um, which are used for awnings uh, for a quick release. So that's what all of this stuff is. And then I also asked Tim if he had any um, anything in the department of chase lights or reverse lights. And he's got some, some um, white and ember dual LEDs um, that I'm gonna put up here um, on the back of the rack for chase lights and reverse lights. So that's what all of this is. Comes with a big old wire harness and all of that. Um, I'll probably not detail the installation of any of that um, during this video, but I will be sure to record it anyway, um, but keep this video focused on the rack. I just got off the phone with Tim, and I had a couple of questions for him about the location for the towers and all of that jazz, um, so I figured I could go ahead and help everybody out with a few um, cheaters basically the towers have four holes in the bottom that fit into the channel just like this and the outside two are used for the 100 series not sure if you can see that but the factory bolts line up with those outside two so that's uh, that's what's going on there and the Essential Expo Rack, which is the one that I ordered right here, um, has four towers. So 
one, two, three, and then four down at the back. And the way that Tim uh, suggests actually mounting this is by starting with the front and the rear towers, tightening those down, um, then putting putting in the, the middle two, but not attaching those to the rack until um, the front and rear are adjusted for height. So that's uh, that's the plan here. I found that the the M8 bolts, which insert into the bottom holes for this uh, for the towers, actually have such a tight tolerance that you have to thread it through. Um, and I was curious if that was a design flaw or a design feature. Um, and Tim explained to me that the channels are so narrow that if he allowed any more space for those holes, the bends in the metal would start to deform the entire plate. So uh, essentially that's a feature. You just have to use an Allen key um, to put those in. So a little frustrating, but you're only doing this once. So not a big deal. One last tidbit. Um, this is the stuff that Tim recommends using, Dynaflex Ultra for window, door, siding, and trim. Um, this stuff is non-hardening, so it'll remain like rubber and keep, keeps weather, weather out fully waterproof. But that's the stuff you want to use. Um, and I, I picked this up at my local Kofor Brothers for, I think it was $7.99, so not going to break, break the bank. And uh, you'll want to put a big old dab on each bolt once it's ready to go into the tower. All right, so at this point, I'm starting on removing these bolts, which are 12 millimeters. And uh, these have not been removed in 20 years, so it's not a bad idea to go slowly. Nice and easy. There's a little life hack for you. I lived 22 years without knowing uh, that inside a cock gun, there's a little knife made specifically for cutting the tip off. Genius. Certainly faster with an impact. Once you get those on, there are some washers with a rubber backside. Put those on, and then you'll want to take a dab of your sealer. But that's the general idea, anyway. These are six millimeter Allens. I've found the best way to get a complete seal is to go a full 360 degrees around the bolt. Just like that. so that when you squeeze it down, um, the sealer goes to all sides of the bolt.
okay. Well, I finished up top with the tower installation. So, all eight of those are now attached to the roof channel. Um, and just to reiterate here, um, the middle bracket, the middle tower, attaches to the frontmost uh, two bolts. So you should have one left over 12 millimeter lonely bolt um, on the back side towards the rear of the vehicle and that's on both sides um, but yeah got two towers in the front one in the center and one at the very back so on these the proper positioning for um, the rack supports are in front of the towers outside or towards the outside of the vehicle um, for the rear I'm not gonna put that little locating bolt in um, I'm just gonna start with the larger hardware and that way I can sort of adjust the height of the rack where it needs to sit um, but one washer on each side of the bolt like that then a lock washer and a nut there you go Alright, so at this point, I've got the rack in place, um, somewhat, but I'm working on fitment. It's been a little bit tricky. I'm trying to get a proper clearance on the front crossbar there. It's hanging down pretty low. Um, so I've wound up having to remove the pinning bolt from the front tower and moved it back one. So it's now in the utmost position on the second tower in the rack. Okay, so I finally got the, the mounting hardware for the rack in place. Um, nothing has been tightened down yet, but I've got everything aligned and the gap looks pretty good underneath that uh, lowest crossbar there. There is enough of a gap that I'm not afraid of this vibrating and hitting the roof. The placement of all of these bolts go bolt, washer, rack. Then on the bottom, let's see, on the bottom, washer, uh, lock washer, nut. Let me show you the locations for all the bolts from front to back. So here's the the frontmost tower, this is the second tower, it's in the middle farthest towards the front. These are in the second farthest to the front. Then the, um, the tower over here, uh, what I'll call the third tower, these are in the, all the way to the very back. And then these are dead middle for the last section of the rack. For this section, I found it easiest to use the open side of the wrench and um, just a straight screwdriver with a 7 16th, I think, 7 30 seconds <laughs> bit. Um, that's that. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to be measuring the gap along the whole rack, make sure that it's somewhat uniform side to side. It's not going to be perfect, but I mean, I can get it close. Alright then, for this part, you'll need a 5mm Allen, and on the back, it's an 11mm. 
uh, just braced against the wreck there. But yeah, that's it. That's the idea for the pinning bolt. Um, I would recommend putting a pinning bolt in the rear rearmost. But if you do that, uh, to put it in the lowest setting, that would be my my tip on the back. And just like that, got all the hardware tightened down. So now. The rack is affixed to the truck. I'll be putting the fairing on, which is a snap-on fairing, in a minute. But first, I wanted to touch up. I found a couple small imperfections in the powder coat. Um, these are, and again, these are super, super small. Um, but on the front end of the rack, and then on the back, there's another one. Uh, so I'm just going to touch those up with a little paint pen um, so that they don't rust and cause an exponential problem. But I would guess that these two holes are where the rack was hung while it was being powder coated, so that's probably why that happened. Uh, with the Essentials Expo rack, there are some clamp style. Um, pieces of equipment that just bolt up to the holes on each side of the fairing um, and then you know obviously that'll go on the front of the front of the rack but I was noticing that the cut along the edges particularly on the back it's more noticeable there's still a lot of extra material on there so I'm probably just gonna kind of clean those up with a razor blade. Alright, a little, uh, little tidbit here. I messed up in the fairing installation the first time. So I reached out to Tim and uh, requested um, that he show me <laughs> basically how to install this thing properly. I had it way up here and figured out that uh, I had the clamps wrong. So basically they're supposed to almost like sandwich between two bars like that. They'll pinch outward instead of grabbing around the bar um, so I had that wrong but pretty simple fix just flip them around um, and I found it easiest to tighten the ones on the bottom um, and then use the top you sort of press on the fairing itself and lift the, the clamp up with your hand while you tighten from the other side um, with the uh, Allen key but that's the, that's the advice I've got for you there. And uh, one little special touch I put on, I just cut a big long piece of, I think it's quarter inch. Um, it's not fuel line, it's actually an old air hose from I think my maxi track compressor. Uh, but I just cut it down long ways and fit it in so that the fairing doesn't mess up the paint of the, um, the top of the truck. The fairing comes with uh, some little rubber feet that can go on it because that would definitely vibrate going down the highway. So I'll put those on the back here. There's just one final touch that I need to add it's a little bit personalized, but I think it looks great. Let's go check it out. Alright, what have we got here? Yeah. Well, 
and short, um, I think it's pretty fair to say that this is one of the best, if not the best, roof rack that money can buy for the 100 series Land Cruiser. Um, I am so grateful to Tim for all his help and support throughout the installation process. Um, he's been a huge help and just his dedication to the Land Cruiser community and to Toyotas and I mean, I guess 4x4 and off-roaders all over the place. Um, he supports a, an incredible amount of vehicles uh, with his products and I really appreciate that he's not just about roof racks. He's got all sorts of stuff, including outfitting, you know, brand name companies, but also little products that he's designed along the way that just make everything a little bit easier. Um, I can't can't speak highly enough of, of his company and what he's built. Um, and I mean, I hope it, the rack speaks for itself in terms of quality and craftsmanship. It's just unbeatable, truly. But that just about does it for this video. I'm gonna detail a couple more smaller products for this, um, including some rack receivers, which are built for attaching awnings and other accessories to the side. Um, and I'm also putting in some reverse and chase lights in the back of the rack, so those will go on, but that that's it for this one. Um, I'll uh, test it out at Cruisers on the Rocks in a couple of days here, and I'm sure you'll all hear about that, but um, until the next one, I'll see you around. Peace.